So for any of you who were um, alive during the 90s, or any of you who have ever seen movies or TV shows from the 90s, the 90s weren't easy. They, 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 were, they were a difficult time. Um, the 80s were probably harder. I don't remember those very well. Uh, and the 70s were was crazy. But, um, but uh, the 90s, in the 90s, you'll notice from all music and TV shows and everything from the 90s, if your jumper wasn't big enough to fit a whole family in it, it wasn't big enough at all. The clothes, everything had to be oversized. Everything had to be huge. I remember uh, some very embarrassing photos of my mom with these kind of, um, what are they called, blouses or tops, I don't know. But everything had shoulder pads. Like, so you had these massive like rugby player shoulders on them. You know what I mean? They were just fantastic. You know, Everything was huge. Um, if you wear a shirt, like a shirt, you never tailored, ta tailored, no, no, your shirt had to be enormous, kind of down to your knees and just kind of loose like a sail. If you, actually your shirt should look more or less like this, you know, I feel very at home in a chasuble. Um, but yeah, and then I, I, I then the, the, the 90s passed and, um, and I grew up and uh, I remember going shopping, realizing that I'm not actually a large t-shirt, I'm a medium. And I started getting clothes that, that actually fit. And it was, it was surprising because it was actually more comfortable. Things were warmer, less drafty. You know, when your trousers weren't dragging around your, between your knees, they actually didn't wear out as quick. You know, it was, I'm actually, you know, I just discovered what size I was in actual things and realized it's actually way better to get what fits, to get what fits to you. Now, why apply all of that? <laughs> this isn't a fashion lesson from the priest, uh, but, what fits to us, what fits to us as, as human beings, like what we're looking for, what we're longing for. The reading today, it's, it's, so, it's almost humorous, right? If it wasn't so tragic. Uh, so God has chosen his people, his people Israel. He wants to be their God and they his people. So he wants to have this very profound, intimate relationship with them. And he wants to lead them and he wants them to listen and he wants to have this, this, this friendship with them on a, on a daily basis. But the people say, well, yeah, but we want a king like everyone else has. You know, all these other nations, all the nations that we're fighting, all the nations that we've come to know, like the Egyptians have kings or pharaohs and the Philistines have kings and all these other people, they have, they have leaders, like, you know, someone to look up to and this is our king, look at him, isn't he amazing, look at his horse. This is what we want. And so Samuel responds to them, okay, do you know what you're asking for? Because if you get a king, he's going to tax everything. He's going to take it the best of your daughters to work in his perfumeries and bakeries and all that. He's going to take the best of your sons for his soldiers. He's going to take the best of your land. He's going to take your he donkeys and she donkeys and he's going to take them all. And people say, yes, that's what we want. And so God says, give them what they want. Give them what they want. It wasn't what God wanted. It wasn't, it wasn't what, what, what fit the people, but it was what they wanted. They wanted something that didn't work for them. But it was what they wanted and said, the Lord, like, what's he supposed to do? Force them to not have a king or, or like, deny them, deny them that and, and, and have them begrudgingly follow God. He gave them what they asked for, even though it wasn't what they were designed for. It wasn't what, what fit to them as God's chosen people. So what happened? Well, then, uh, as we'll hear, Samuel uh, anoints Saul. Saul starts off okay, ends badly, followed by David. David starts well, gets a bit rocky, ends up kind of organizing someone's murder, um, kind of finishes more or less good and then organizes more murders. Uh, he's followed by, by Solomon. Solomon builds the temple, starts off great, very wise, all good, then starts to marry lots of wives and adopt their practices of worship and ends up... Uh, bringing back all sorts of things that the pharaohs used to do, enacting slavery, uh, not taking care of the widow and the orphan, not following God's law, and not following the first commandment, to put God in the first place, no other gods. And then his son goes off the rails altogether and really fulfills what this reading says. There's Rehoboam in, in the kingdom of the north. He's, so, he, he's in the south. He's so violent and oppressive to the people that they say no we don't want you as our king anymore and then the king split never to be reunited so it's it's tragic this all that that's prophesied here will happen and it's because this wasn't how god designed it it doesn't it doesn't fit to them it's not their size 
they're designed for God. Now, fast forward to us, us today. Uh, it's, it's, it's no different. He wants to be our God and we his people. He wants to fulfill our every need and fulfill the deepest desires of our heart, which isn't to say that we can't have legitimate and good things like good food and good company and husbands and wives and all that kind of, those kind of good things. Fine, that, that's fine. But like the deepest desires, the greatest desires of our heart, he, he, he wants to fulfill. He wants to, he wants to be our God and we his people. And I just find, I, I watch very, very little TV. Um, I'm not sure if people watch TV in general anyway today. I don't know. I think it's all screens and things. But um, whenever you watch any of those, I don't, I don't recommend it, but if you ever you happen to be in a TV shop and these things are on, where they have any of these modern-day singer, rapper type people, and they're dancing there with all of their lady dancers doing their thing. And like, the, the, the image that's presented is these guys have made it. You know, big cars cruising up, and then all the, I believe they're, they're referred to as honeys, um, <laughs> get out of the car. And it's all, look at these, oh, look at this, these guys have made it. But it, when I see that kind of thing, it actually makes me feel so, something like ill. It, I, I feel kind of, I don't know, it's like, I just like some, watching someone eat mud, thinking, oh, I love this stuff. No, you know, it's just like life is actually so much more than that it's actually more like that's not ultimately that is actually not fulfilling charming and all as it looks so even though it doesn't even look charming you know seductive as it looks that's actually really it's 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 so far from fulfilling because you're made for so much more that doesn't fit what we've been designed for as human beings we've been designed for god and this this is this god-shaped hole in our hearts that nothing and no one can fill but him but here we are filling it with mud Going, yeah, I love this. But then you wonder why you're empty. So, like, there's something, there's something missing, and it's, 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 it's designed that way. We're designed that way, that, that God has created us with this need for him. And nothing else is going to fulfill it, no matter how far we run, how fast we run, no matter what we put in there, no matter how much of it we put in there, nothing is going to fulfill that but him, ever. And that's, uh, I think, uh, a beautiful truth. But one that will also very much challenge us because this, this, this isn't what the world is going to say. The world is going to say, be like us, be like everyone else, be normal. But following the Lord isn't, not anymore. So it means, <laughs> following the Lord today means be different. And being different is hard. You know, if you wore clothes that actually fit you in the 90s, you look like a... You look weird. You look wrong. You're just wrong. But it made sense. It was would have been. It would have been right. So we asked the Lord today. We're just praying for our. It's, it's, it's hard to know where to stop this prayer because it's 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 so it's so it's so big. Um, praying for our country, that we might recognize the place that God should have in it. We're praying for our own hearts as well, recognizing the place that God should have in here. You know, it's not blaming everyone else out there, but the place that God should have in here. And for our, you know, our culture, our culture, which is so global these days that all of these, I say, fashion influences and music influences and TVs, it's all fairly global and fairly instant. And it's, it presents us with, with answers to, 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 to this question of meaning and purpose that are grossly insufficient. As St. Augustine famously said, you have created us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Lord Jesus, may we find our rest and our peace and our fulfillment 